carissimi fratelli e sorelle, as I think about all of the many tribulations with which we have had to confront since we last observed the church's Advent season, in truth, I must confess, there has not been very much in the public dimension of our lives this year for which we might with one chorus spontaneously, enthusiastically, and immediately shout, Rejoice! Yet there has been a good deal in the private dimension of my service as your Archbishop for which I am deeply grateful, and indeed for which I do now gladly cry out, Rejoice! Witnessing your resilient faith and your fathom, fathomless care for the poor and the neglected whose needs during this unexpected pandem pandemic moment have only intensified, these offer ample reasons for me to invite us all to rejoice in the Lord on this the third Sunday of Advent. This has been a year during which I must admit John the Baptist once again has become a very welcome and noteworthy figure. John knew who he was, and most importantly, John knew who he was not. John knew that someone more important than he was, was coming. John knew that he was not the Messiah, and he modestly understood that he was not God. During this past year, I have come to recognize many of my own limitations. Many of you, perhaps, may have already come to identify a few of my imperfections much earlier. Perhaps this past year, with a humble heart, you have discovered some of your own character flaws, impatience, fear, unwillingness to believe and to trust. And with an honest heart, you have resolved to try to do better in the future. We call that spiritual conversion. And you can rejoice in that insight. This Sunday, the church invites us all to rejoice, perhaps because at least half of Advent has now passed, and we are closer to the wondrous feast of Christmas. But more important than that, we are closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus in glory. We are closer to the fulfillment of our destiny in Christ. We ought to rejoice for who we are by God's grace, his chosen ones, his beloved people. While our current condition of the pandemic may cause us to neglect the many reasons that we have for rejoicing, it must not rob us of the obligation to praise God for all that we do have. The vaccines that are now, even now, being shipped across our nation and throughout our world should inspire some hope in our hearts and a thanksgiving for the skill and the determination of the scientific community that has discovered these effective vaccines. We should also thank those first responders, the people who have kept us fed, worked in medical facilities, helped us to design and implement new ways for teaching our children, and carried out the ordinary but essential tasks that we too often take for granted. We can and should say rejoice and we should praise God for them. 
even in the face of the trials that this year has brought, we still have incentives to give thanks, if for no other reason than to look ahead with hope for a better 2021. One of the reasons that I shout re rejoice today is that 37 years ago today, on the, on the feast of Santa Lucia, Joseph Louis Bernadin, whose family immigrated from Trent, ordained me a bishop. And I am deeply grateful for the times that I learned from him and served with him and got to know and love him. I suspect his Italian ancestry purposely chose Santa Lucia for the feast of the ordination. And I have always considered myself a Lucy Bishop. God bless you. <laughs>